Hello, this is Mr. Aaron Neal from Burlington Central High School. I'm going to lead you through the simple steps necessary to program a VEX robot using the EZC software. The EZC software is software designed to alleviate some of the problems people traditionally have with programming in that it doesn't require you to know the structure or notation of the C programming language. So what we're going to do is we're going to lead you through with four simple videos first one being a general overview of the software, the next one being how to program the radio control aspect of VEX, the VEX competitions, then we're going to lead you through the steps to program an autonomous mode where the robot is not directly controlled by a user but controls itself, and then a troubleshooting section and how to download the program itself onto the robot. So the first thing you'll have to do is open the program. Once you've installed it, you should see a shortcut key here. If you don't see a shortcut key on your desktop, you can probably open it with the start menu. If you're having trouble due to uh, not having a license key, you're going to have to contact your system administrator or you're going to have to track down how to purchase the software. You can download the program, but the key itself is something that you're going to have to uh, purchase. Okay, so now you can notice that the EZC software has all the no normal file, edit, view, options, build and download, window and help sections that you see in most Windows programs. So now within the file menu you'll be able to do things like save, open, or start a new project. It also saves the most recently opened programs here and allows you to print your code. The edit has the normal cut, paste, uh, undo, redo, the view options you probably want to leave as the default. I'll show you how to make small adjustments to that in just a moment. In the options menu, you're probably not going to even need to touch this. Okay, if you're just programming a standard VEX, pro, uh, VEX robot for a competition, you're not going to have to change any of the stuff. Now the build and download section is going to become vital when we do the video on how to get the program onto the robot. But for now, don't worry too much about it. The Windows section, again, probably won't have to change anything here. It just allows you to display the information in a different way. The Help session, section, uh, again, you probably won't need to delve too much into this unless you're trying to do something more advanced. So if you're programming for a competition such as the one that we run in the Halton District School Board, you, you want to open a new competition project. Okay, Opening a new project will probably just lead to confusion. So you don't want to use this button here. You want to use Open New Competition Project. Okay. Now, there's two options here. You can either use the VEXNet or the Crystal Interface. Now, this depends on what you have in your kit. The Crystal Interface is the one that we use here in, in Halton. But in other school boards, I understand that they have access to the more advanced Wi-Fi version of the controllers. So instead of doing that, though, for now, we're just going to use the Crystals. Okay. The Crystals need to be told how long to run in each mode. So when you click on crystal, you can change these to different amounts. So for our program, we're going to have a 10 second autonomous mode and a 120 second user control mode. So what this means is that for 10 seconds, the robot will be controlled just by the program. Nothing you do with the remote control will affect the way that the robot runs. After 10 seconds, the user will gain control of the robot. The robot will be able to run for 120 seconds before it shuts off. Once you click OK, you'll see that it sets up all the main parts of the program. Now just uh, one little thing that you'll notice is that a lot of these buttons that were up here that were grayed out are no longer grayed out. You can change the zoom, you know, zoom in a little bit more, make it bigger depending on your screen. Okay, you can zoom out or in using these buttons. Now, what I would suggest you do is just move this over. This displays the actual C code. But for most, for most students and for most staff, you're not going to be particularly interested in that, so you want to have this window a little bit larger. Okay, you can also change this one as well. You can see that I have one that's already open behind. You can have more open or less open. So now you can switch between the different parts of the program using this drop-down menu. So here would be where you program autonomous, here you program operator control. Do not use the main win window to change to autonomous mode. When you double click on autonomous, it opens this, it just allows you to change how long it will be in autonomous mode. Okay, so that's the basics for how to switch between the different parts. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to use this module, the user controlled, to program the user controlled aspect of the program.